Hi, I'm Sophie Snyder from Teen Network Board. TMB is a county and school board appointed teen advocacy group composed of Arlington High School students from different backgrounds and parts of the county. Our overall mission is to provide community a community voice for Arlington youth. As part of our work, we hope to keep youth informed on issues that impact the well-being of our community. As such, October 11th is National Coming Out Day. We wanted to share our support in the form of a video that tells two individuals coming out stories. Enjoy. National Coming Out Day was founded in 1988 by Richard Itchberg, a psychologist, and Gene O'Leary, a gay rights activist, to help raise awareness for the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community and its civil rights movements. They chose October 11th to mark the anniversary of the second major national March on Washington for lesbian and gay rights, which took place in 1987. With estimates of half a million people participating, it was nearly five times the size of the first March in 1979. National Coming Out Day is observed throughout the United States and other countries around the world. I'm Julie Alexandrin. I am in my 50s, have two grown daughters um, and um, who are 21 and 25. I live um, with my wife on a family farm of beef cattle in Central Virginia. I um, am a college professor and administrator for the University of Phoenix. And I also over kind of co-facilitate a youth group called YALS, which is for high schoolers um, who within the LBGTQIA plus community and which works on advocacy and leadership. My name's Catherine or Kat Sword. Uh, I'm 17. I'm a senior at Yorktown. I'm a trans woman uh, oh. who's, well, girl, I will be a woman in like nine months, but came out as trans in eighth grade. So I didn't come out until my 30s. Um, I was married to a man. I dated men in college. Um, and part of it was because now kind of looking back at like, why didn't I? Um, I really realized I didn't explore my sexuality. And I think I know that I didn't because I knew that it wasn't safe in my house. Um, my mom, um, my father is gay, so it's kind of unusual in that way, but he left my mother because he was gay. So my mother, who I lived with, wasn't totally, though she's likes, you know, is not against people who are gay, she doesn't want her daughter, she didn't want her daughter to be. And so it was very clear to me that I needed to be straight. Um, and so I kind of just always went down that path. And then I really wanted kids. Uh, like that's a real big thing. It was a real big thing for me. I really wanted kids. And so it was kind of like, hey, this is the easiest way. I was in the, you know, late 80s was when I went to college. Um, and so the easiest way to do that at that point, and hardly anybody was talking about other ways for lesbian couples to do that, was to, to get a guy. So I never really even understood my sexuality, um, which I think is really interesting until, um, so I was married, to, so we met in college, my first husband I met in college, um, and he and I um, dated in college, moved in together after college, and got married two years later. Um, and then two years later, we had our first daughter together. Um, and then four years later, we had another daughter. Um, and so it wasn't until after our second daughter was was finishing breastfeeding and we kind of knew we weren't gonna have any more children that I kind of said, hmm, and, that, and, and sex kind, kind of had been an issue for us in our relationship, our sexuality kind of stuff. And so I kind of really started exploring where I was. And I really realized that I was not sexually attracted to him. And that was not something that was really exciting to me and um, felt kind of badly that I hadn't done that before. And, and we were kind of in an unusual situation, but I also, for the first time, finally understood what sexual attraction was. So he and I, um, I finally came out to him and then um, for the then we stayed together for a year, and probably that year was one of our best of our marriages because um, our sex the sexual issue wasn't an issue for us anymore. We understood where we were coming from. And um, after a year, we both decided that we wanted to explore more of dating other people and being with other people. So we split up, and I um, met a woman. I dated her, and I married her. So I, she was my first wife, um, and um, we it was a good relationship. But there were some issues. And then, um, so she and I separated, and so now I'm married to my college roommate, who I have known now for over 30 years. So my coming out story was kind of a really interesting place in my 30s. 
um, coming out to my children, um, which they didn't totally understand. You know, they, they're like, oh, you're splitting up. And, um, but they, they really liked the woman I was first with. Um, and so it was very interesting. Um, in that way, they called her Fluffy and that, and she was their Fluffy. So like when we were at um, events or things and people go, okay, so that's your mom. Who's that? And they'd go, oh, that's our Fluffy. And they'd all, and the kids, our kids were like, yeah, that's our Fluffy. Everybody's got a Fluffy, right? Um, so that's kind of how they, it wasn't really that hard for them until they were older, um, having lesbian parents. Um, my family, of course, didn't totally accept it. My mother was very questioning of how to, how could I know? And all of those kinds of questions you get, even when you're in a teenager, to ask your 34-year-old daughter, it's kind of hard to deal with. Um, and then was very against the woman that I was with, um, my first wife, um, very kind of almost aggressive towards her coming into my life and into my daughter's life, which was really hard for my daughters because they loved her so much. And it was really hurtful to see their grandmother not want this person in. And they didn't understand why she didn't want it want this person in my life. Um, my mom has somewhat accepted it more. Um, not totally though. Um, so and that's it. And my father unfortunately died before I came out. So I never got to tell him and let him know that that that's that I um, was like him and that I was gay also. Um, so I kind of missed that piece. Um, my siblings were pretty acceptable, my, accepting. My brother was much more accepting than my sister. Um, but again, my sister's not, I'm not that close to my sister. So um, but I think um, socially, I definitely lost friends. Um, there are definitely friends who couldn't support me through my trans through the transition and doing that. Whereas I had other friends who were very willing and very accepting to support. So that was always kind of really interesting. Um, and then in some ways, I always coming out when we changed jobs or whenever we kids went to a new school, all of those kinds of things. We always had coming uh, coming out. Um, and that's always interesting or, you know, or meeting people and people trying to figure out our relationship, um, those kinds of things. So, you know, when people say, what's your coming out story? It's not always stops, you know, right? Just because I just told my family or I just told my friends at that point. Whenever you change, you, you again, a lot of times have to do that coming out again. Originally, I was, I thought I was envy. It was like, okay, so exactly when I started figuring out that I wasn't cis. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, hmm. I'll say I probably started having inclinations at the end of seventh grade, like really figuring it out. I thought I was NB up and I told my uh, sibling in September, I was like, Lyra, I, I don't think I'm boy. And she was like, cool. And I was like, don't tell mom and dad. And she was like, okay. Yeah. And so at that time, I was, yeah, I was more just trying to figure things out. I didn't really know what I wanted. I didn't really even know what I was. My family is accepting. Uh, you know, they don't fully get it, but I don't really expect anyone who isn't trans to fully get it. Uh, you know, they're the one, they've paid for my hormones and my drugs and my, yeah, they financed my transition. So, I mean, good on them. Uh, so I came out my teachers by email November 20th 2016 yes because uh, I checked the timestamp yeah so I was just capped for several months until in May of 2017 my family was like cat we're changing your name I'm like great they're like you need a full name and I'm like oh shucks uh, I need to actually come up with the full name so yeah I just went with Catherine some in sometimes um I think finding a good time to do it when people really can really listen, um, you know, you know, at a family dinner or at a family, um, a time when everybody's sitting together and, and has time to do it and people aren't rushing off so that questions can be answered and things like that can be happen. Um, I think also thinking sometimes of maybe having support there with you, you know, if you've told a friend and your family knows your friend, maybe having your friend there with you. It, you don't have to do it on your own. You can bring in supports. And I think also some ways practicing it, and practicing what you think your, the questions might be. Um, and even sometimes asking your friend, like, what do you think my parents might ask? Or asking your friends those questions too, because um, 
if they know your parents, they may also have some insights into what your parents might think, or them also being someone that you came out to, they might have had, you know, hey, this is what I was thinking when you came out, maybe your folks might think that also. So kind of having someone on the other side sometimes helps us see what we're, we might be missing. Um, but I think also knowing that, um, you know, really emphasizing that you're not changing, that this is just a different piece of you that people may have already seen or may not have already seen, um, and that really emphasizing that you're not changing, and that, um, and really telling your parents where you are in the transition. If you are, you know, not, it's not a transition if it's, if it's sexuality, but, um, you know, or it could be kind of a transition, telling your parents, you know, who knows and who doesn't know, and who is it safe to tell and who isn't it safe to tell, and to think about those things ahead of time. Like, it's okay to tell this aunt and that aunt, but please don't tell this, you know, this other person. Um, those kinds of things, I think, can also really help your family by not outing you, um, not intentionally, um, and that kind of thing, and talking about that conversation of who do you want them to tell and who's safe to tell and who do you want to tell and who's important for you to tell. Um, I think that's important too. Test the waters first, then yeah, take the plunge. Um, I have friends whose families weren't fully supportive, but their families mostly just weren't acquainted. Basically, most parents, from my experience, love their kids and want what's best for their kids. And if what's best for you is coming out and transitioning is, and really being who you are and, you know, who you know you are and having everyone else see that, then yeah, your parents will appreciate that for you. They may not understand that, but I don't think any parent ever will truly understand. Anyone who is not trans or gay or anything won't truly know what it's like to be that. But at least, at the very least, my friends and my family, they're gonna try. And that's really what matters. If you're looking for a way to get involved in the LGBTQIA community in Arlington, YALS, the Youth Advocacy and Leadership Learning Through Social Support Group, meets the first and third Thursday of every month at 6 p.m. It's for ages 13 to 18 and focuses on LGBTQ issues. If you're interested in being part of YALS, please contact Julie at safespacenova.org. Also, another local resource is Supporting and Mentoring Youth Advocates and Leaders, or SMYAL, which supports and empowers lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and questioning youth in the Washington, D.C. metropolitan region. Through youth leadership, SMYAL creates opportunities for LGBTQ youth to build self-confidence, develop critical life skills, and engage their peers and community through service and advocacy. Committed to social change, SMYAL brings, sustains, and advocates for programs, policies, and services that LGBTQ youth need as they grow into adulthood. To learn more, check out their website at smyal.org. If you're ever struggling with any of the topics discussed in this video, please don't hesitate to utilize the Trevor Project's lifeline at 1-866-488-7386. This lifeline provides 24-7 support for young people that need a safe, judgment-free space to talk.